Well, hello Internet, and welcome to part 8 of my How to Code PHP tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through how to create an example login script that you can use on your website. Here we continue our adventures in How to Code PHP. If you haven't seen my previous How to Code PHP videos, you should do that, or you will be completely lost. I'm also going to skip all of the HTML that would normally be included so I can keep this video brief. I use the same HTML on all of these script pages that I used in the previous PHP tutorial, so refer to that for the rest of the code or refer to NewThinkTank.com to download all of this code. Here I'm opening a stream so that I can easily communicate with the server. For more information on this, refer to the previous PHP tutorial. I'm creating a session and connecting to the database by pulling in the code in the file config.inc.php. Here's all the basic HTML code. You obviously will need to fill in more content here. I'm just providing this basic information so that you can understand how I laid out the overall page. Here I'm checking if the form has been submitted. If it is, I'm checking if the visitor entered an email address with the empty function. If they did, I store that email address in the variable named E. If not, I tell them that they forgot to enter their email and assign the value of false to the variable E. Here I'm performing the same operations I did with the email address, except here I'm validating a password. Here I'm making sure they entered a value for both the email and password. If they did, I create a query to send to the database. It will get me all of the user IDs and first names from the table users that have an email and password equal to the one entered, and an active account. The function SHA is used in SQL to encrypt the password. I then assign the results of the query to the variable result, or alert the visitor to any errors that occurred. The if statement is checking that just one result was provided. We only want one account for each email address set up. MySQL fetch array takes the results of the previous query and stores them in an array named row. MySQL free result is used to free up the memory being used by the result variable. This is used to keep everything running as fast as possible. You should always do your best to free up resources on the server when they're no longer needed. The goal here is to turn you into a good and not just an okay PHP coder. We no longer need the database either, so close the connection with the MySQL close function. Then I store the values of the first name and user ID variables to the session variables for use later. Here I'm defining where I want to redirect the user after everything checks out. When I use the key HTTP host in the array server, it will return the current page the visitor is on and PHP self is the current script being run. I then delete any unneeded slashes from the new URL I'm creating. I then add the name of the page I want the visitor to be directed to, being index.php, and then I close the buffer and quit the script. If I couldn't locate the visitor in the database or their account hasn't been activated, I alert them to that fact. If the variables E or P contain no value, the visitor would be warned to please try again. And here is the rest of the HTML code that you would enter to finish off this script. I hope you enjoyed part 8 of the How to Code PHP tutorial. Better yet, I hope you learned something. In the next presentation, I'm going to cover how to write a forgotten password script. Till next time.